Howdy, and welcome to episode two of Cody's True Crime. Got a Winchester in my hand here, so the first thing I'm going to do is, so, is prove the weapon's safe, which I've already done to my camera person. Now you know this weapon's safe. This video is going to be a story I can guarantee you you've never heard before. It starts on the 5th of October 1892 and it involves the Dalton Gang. So the Dalton Gang consisted of four brothers, Bill, Bob, Emmett and Gratt. And they had a couple of other blokes with them. And Bill was the front man or the scout if you like, he was never involved in the robberies. But the other three brothers, along with two other accomplices on the 5th of October, 1892, decided that things were getting too hot for them. They had been successful outlaws away from home, away from where they lived, but the law was closing in. They decided to do one last big job that would set them up for life and get them out of the life of crime. They were going to do this by going to their own hometown in southern Kansas called Coffeyville. Coffeyville was a very prosperous town, had two significant banks that carried a lot of money, and they decided that's, that they were going to hit both banks at the same time and clean them out. Because it was their hometown, because they were known in town, they wore false beards, false moustaches, false sideburns, and they rode into town in long coats trying to hide the Winchester rifles that they carried. When they rode into town, it was their hometown, and they knew of an alleyway that was surrounded on all sides by tall brick walls, had a hitching rail, and they knew that's where they were going to leave their horses when they went to do the job. What do you think of roadworks? Do you ever get a bit cross or frustrated when you come across roadworks? 5th of October, 1892. Perfectly planned crime. The Daltons go to ride into their alleyway and it's closed for roadworks. It's because it's coming up towards 1900. The town is becoming more modern. They want to put in decent footpaths and stone curbing. And so the Daltons find where they were going to stash their horses when they did the robbery is closed off to them. What they should have done is gone away, called it off, and had Bill come and reconnoitre some more for them. But Grat was worried that Bill would be recognised so he made a spur of the moment decision to still carry out the robbery. Emmett and one of the others went for one bank, Grat, Bob and a other, one of the other guys went for the other bank. And what happened? As they were heading for the bank, guns hidden, one of the local townspeople who owns a shop sees someone wearing false facial hair heading for a bank. He didn't recognise the Daltons, but he realised someone was heading to the bank in disguise. He grabbed a rifle, he alerted other townspeople. Emmett goes into one bank and gets $20,000. 1892, he gets 20 grand. Grat goes into the other bank where the teller says, very sorry, I can't open the safe. It's on a, one of those new time delays. I can't open it. Grat grabs $1,100, not bothering to check the safe, which was unlocked and contained a fortune. But he never bothered to even check. The guys then go to leave the bank. When Emmett leaves his bank, he sees some townspeople behind round corners and in doorways with rifles and he opens fire. What a fool! Because then, in a general store, directly across from the other bank, is a man who'd been in the army, who sells Winchester rifles and who has ammunition by the crate load. 
and he tells everyone in his store, grab a rifle. So they all grab rifles. He sells uh, ovens, stoves, iron stoves. People get behind iron stoves. They open fire on the five bandits. At the time the gunfire starts, the local sheriff, and this is where I can guarantee you you've never heard this full story. The local sheriff is doing his rounds. His name's John Connolly. It's a peaceful town, it's a quiet town. We're near in 1900. The Wild West is just about over. He's doing his rounds, having left his gun at home. He goes into a nearby shop and picks up the shopkeeper's Winchester. It's America in the late 1800s. Who didn't have a gun? He goes in, grabs the Winchester. Here's where the gunfire's coming. Heads round a building to come into the laneway where the Daltons had left their horses. The laneway they had left their horses in was a straight line through the centre of the business district with no protection, no cover. The horses were just standing there. You could see the full block down the alleyway. John Connolly, much loved local sheriff, steps into the alleyway cautiously, sees the horses of the outlaws, and as he does, does not realize Grat Dalton's right behind him, wounded, shoots the sheriff once in the back, sheriff drops, and a few hours later, the sheriff's dead. Long story cut short now is that the uh, Bob and Grat are killed. The two co-offenders that are there are killed. They never even get out of town. Emmett, if you've got to say one thing about a outlaw, Emmett could have jumped on his horse and ridden away. He didn't. He jumped on his horse. He turned back to where all the mayhem was taking place, rode his horse, tried to get his brother to help Bob, who was mortally wounded. Bob can't even put his hand up and tells his brother, just get away. But in that short space of time, two people come up behind him and shoot him. He falls more wounded as well. There's a bit of a story about how the townspeople wanted to lynch Emmett and it didn't happen. They managed to save him. He did 16 years in prison uh, as a result of his crimes. And this is where the part of the story is that you will not have heard before. Because John Connolly, the sheriff, was unarmed. When I was a police officer in the 70s, on Easter Sunday, in March, Easter Sunday, 1977, I was at home, woken by loud banging on the door, opened the door, and it was my patrol partner. At the time, I had worked for five years driving a police patrol car in the streets of the suburb of Elizabeth, South Australia. At that time, as a police officer, we were issued with Browning semi-automatic handguns. They were of a 380 caliber, 0 .380. What that means is they were a very small bullet in 38 caliber. They were in a very small automatic gun with a short barrel and they were as useless as an ashtray on a motorcycle. What did we do with them? We were issued with them when we started patrol. We went out to our Chrysler patrol vehicles and we locked our handguns in the glove box of the police car for the shift because they were useless. You could, you'd be better off throwing them at an offender. Why did my partner on Easter Sunday in March 77 come round to my home, I wasn't on the phone back then, and hammer on my front door? Because I worked Delta 10, I was off duty, two police officers who were on duty working my patrol area had gone to a domestic disturbance. When they got there and got out of the police car, um, John Raymond Black, was the man that was there. He was armed with a rifle. He opened fire on those two police officers. They were hit multiple times trying to get back to their police vehicle. And those two men that were shot, two police officers that were shot by Black, made me 
seriously pause to this day all these years later that it was my patrol area where I worked, where I was still posted and had I gone to that front door and been confronted by black I would have been unarmed because my handgun was locked in the police vehicle. I never did that again. Black got 16 years for attempted murder. Just as Emmett got 16 years for his uh, offence. John Connolly was killed, he was unarmed and picked up someone else's gun. I would have been unarmed when I went there. The true irony of this whole story when you say, when I say I promise you've never heard all this before, is because later in my career I was sent to help investigate another attempted murder by a man called Tony Grosser. And as a part of that investigation, I was sent to Yatla Labour Prison to interview a possible witness. Who was that witness? It was John Raymond Black. And there I was sitting at Yatla Labour Prison in an interview room, across an interview desk, interviewing a man who may well, but for the quirk of a calendar, a shift change, may well have been the man that opened fire on me had I gone to his house. So there's a story of the Dalton brothers, the demise of the Dalton brothers, and how that interacts with something that later happened, 1977 Easter Sunday, then further on in relation to yet another attempted murder by Tony Grosser. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, longest one I've ever done. I would like you to either like the video, make a comment about the video, share it please and subscribe and all I can say is thank you very much, cheers. <laughs>